Sculptor Jeffrey Zachman gained national recognition when he transformed the path of his artistic career from functional potter to metal and motion. I love to watch people so much that I think this is just bait. This is just my way of getting people in to look at them. <laughs> I'm very interested in different perspectives and what makes people tick. And this kind of goes with that in a way. At an art show, people reveal an awful lot about themselves just by watching a sculpture and how they interact with people around them. I started my art career, I was a functional potter for 15 years. It was probably a very good place for me to start because I learned the ropes on selling artwork, how to approach the public, what shows to do, where to go with that, how to enter into art shows. All along I had been making these kinetic sculptures and I just kind of made them for myself. I didn't think anybody else would like them. I thought it was my weird quirk because I hadn't seen anything like it. My wife on the other hand was saying, Jeff, you should do a show with these. And I was like, oh geez, no one's going to buy them and I'm going to be humiliated. They're going to point and laugh at me. You know, they're not going to pay what I have to ask for them. And she just kept on it. After a while, I said, okay, I'm going to apply to some art shows. The first one I did was right here in Fergus Falls. It was fun to do, didn't sell anything, but people would just crowd around and watch them. It was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. And then the second one was a small organization in Minneapolis. I sold some pieces. It was just amazing. And then the third one was at the Smithsonian. I did the Smithsonian Craft Show, which was like a career high point. People pay a lot of money to come to the show. So at that time I had a lot of little tiny pieces as well as some of my larger stuff. And I thought, oh, they're not going to want to look at the little stuff because little stuff was hand done and stuff. So I put those all down on the floor. And then up on the tables I put my bigger pieces. And these guys came in in their very expensive Italian suits on their knees playing with these sculptures. Totally blew me away. Some of our most valuable tools look like junk to anybody else. And we talk about when we, we die and they have that big auction, all our really valuable tools just be in the, in the dollar box. This is one of those tools. It's a um, thing I use for making spirals, kind of a tornado type, type shape that is in a lot of my work. And the ball comes in kind of slow and then it speeds up as it drops down. So it's adds a lot of action. People tend to like that kind of stuff. I just love that little detail. Things have just taken off. Within six months of doing my first show, I didn't have time to do any more art shows with the pottery at all. And I haven't looked back. The inspiration for my artwork starts when I was about eight years old. And I've been thinking about this a lot lately. I had a friend who had an Amish toy that you put a marble in one side and it would go down one side and drop down and then go back and drop down. And that's all it did. And that friend and I played with that for a long time. And then where I grew up when they were building like crazy in the 50s, they dug the basements and then for some reason nothing happened for about two years. And they had these huge piles of dirt. And I and my friends and my sisters would go out and I have a handful of marbles and I would make trails and tunnels for marbles. And that's how this all started. And then when I went to college studying ceramics, I started making slab pots with holes and channels that marbles would go through. People were quite interested in them and it was fun for me to do. Clay didn't work very well. It shrinks and it warps. It took me a while to realize, you know, that I needed to work in something other than clay just because I was a potter and it was kind of one of those slap in the forehead moments of what am I working in clay for? And then everything kind of came together. And a lot of this is done just by by eye, I've done enough of them now that I kind of get a feeling on how things are going, but at the same time I get surprised. And if you're in my studio, there are balls laying all over the place. The jump is one of the things that uh, people are always mystified. How do you figure that out? And the way that I tell them is you can take 
the slope that it's got with the speed of the ball. So you're taking the velocity of the ball and the distance, and you can calculate that out and see where it lands. Or you can take the track, make the swoop, and wherever it lands, weld the baskets. That's what I do. <laughs> see, that cleared better. People are drawn to motion. And I think it's actually something that's probably buried very deep in our primitive selves that we're attuned to motion. In our primitive caveman self, probably whatever was moving was either lunch or a threat. So we pay attention to that. When you're sitting at an art show, the chairs we sit at are, are fairly high, so we're at eye level with people. And it's really fun because I'm sitting there in this chair and people are walking by and all of a sudden you can see a head and come right into my booth. It's like, whoa! <laughs> It's like, I always think of it like a gopher, just, what the heck is that? And it just draws them in. And it's just the motion that people are just drawn to motion for some reason. Prairie Mosaic is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4th, 2008 the North Dakota Council on the Arts, and by the members of Prairie Public.